welcome back to one on one shadow boxing, have your say. We're going to continue our discussion with Bill Hussle, who is the deputy mayor of Netherlands. Uh, the topic is still the forced amalgamation of the councils in WA, mainly in Perth Metro, because the government wanted to do it on the whole state, but I think something has stopped the government to doing it the whole state. What was that? The National Bill? Party won't allow the government to deal with the country areas. And I went to hear the National Party leader speak yes. only yesterday, uh, who said they will not support forced amalgamations. They can see the writing on the wall, that if, if this thing is pushed and forced in the metro area, next thing is it will be pushed and forced in the country. So what's their opinion? Why? So what was the leader of the party saying? Well, they're saying that they believe in people having their right to have a say. You can do it voluntarily and you can do it through the Daedal process. Now, let me explain the Daedal process. Tom Daedal was the member for Subiaco. He was in Parliament when I was there. He wasn't always easy to live with. <laughs> but Tom was a good man. And at the end of the day, he put up an amendment to the Local Government Act that said, if you go through the process to yes. bring about an amalgamation, you can then force a poll to give the people a vote. Now, you force the poll by putting in a simple petition of 250 names. You've then got two hurdles to jump to make that poll binding. Firstly, you have to have a 50% turnout in the poll. So that's very hard to achieve because generally local government voting is voluntary and yes. if you get 30% you're lucky. So people have to be pretty gingered up to go out to the extent of 50% of the electorate votes and then the majority of that 50% have to vote no. If those three conditions are met, the petition, the 50% and the majority voting no, the minister can't force the amalgamation. If they're not met, even if they get the 49% poll, the minister can go understand. right ahead and force the amalgamation that has been recommended by the Local Government Advisory Board. So we have the situation now that the Local Government Advisory Board has been through a process in relation to the whole of the metropolitan yes. area and has made a number of recommendations for amalgamations. But it's been done in such a way that on a technical reading of the Act yes. and the date or provisions, it may be that the people don't get a right to a poll. So people are saying, this is crooked. This is not straight, that we should go through the process and then defeat the intention that people get a vote. As far as the western suburbs are concerned, yes. if we had the group of five, which is what Colin Barnett's aiming for, having promised very clearly there would be no forced amalgamations. Several it, times, before several the election and after the election. Before the election and after the election. Having said he wouldn't, he's now proposing to legislate to create the Perth City Authority and take bits of territory from people here, there and everywhere that he wants to include in Perth. And the City of Perth, I might say, are going along with it. They're very happy about their territorial ambitions being met in this way. But it's not right. It's not right. Colin Barnett also said yes. that he would follow the local government advisory board process. But in relation to Perth and the western suburbs, the recommendations they made were not in accordance with what Colin Barnett wanted. So he said, oh, well, we'll legislate. So there's another broken promise. And I think that's not the way to go. So this is like circumventing all possible sort of democratic procedures yes. which have been safeguarding the life of the local people and yes. their own right to make decisions. Yes. And now we've got a state government, we say, OK, if these safeguards exist and we couldn't really jump through the fence, then we have to do something. Then it's, it's just a procedure which is authoritarian. It is authoritarian, and I think it's unfortunate. I mean, sometimes governments, let me be quite frank, have to be authoritarian. They have to make decisions. That's what they're elected for. And but sometimes they're good reasons. They're, they're tough decisions. But people have to win arguments. One of the big criticisms of this local government change, which is being presented now, 
is that the argument's never been put. We have no cost-benefit analysis. We have no debate. We just have the Premier saying, we have this is it. obvious. This is what we're going to do. This is what's needed for the future. Well, there's no one saying in Nedlands or Claremont or Mosman Park or Peppermint Grove or Cottesloe yes. that we're lacking any services now. And the Local Government Advisory Board itself has acknowledged that we are financially viable. The Robson Inquiry acknowledged that we are financially viable. So what is, what is the benefit? I don't know. And that's the position. Nobody knows because it has not been explained. The argument has not been put. There hasn't been a decent public debate. Is this going to happen any time? The government is currently preparing governor's orders to implement the recommendations that they have accepted from the Local Government Advisory Board, which are all the recommendations except those relating to the City of Perth and the Western Suburbs. Mm -hmm. Those government orders are subject... And if those governor's orders are completed and are lawful, the process will go on and some places, some, but yes. not all, will have the right to force polls. The Governor's orders and the process are subject of two challenges in the Supreme Court. A group of councils and a private individual yes. have taken proceedings and the Shire of Peppermint Grove has taken proceedings. The hearings on those legal proceedings will begin later this month. There's already been some preliminary hearings. So if those um, uh, hearings are successful, what the government's doing may be stopped by the courts. If they are not successful, yes. then one assumes that all of those amalgamations that have been accepted, all those recommendations, yes. will proceed subject to those that have a right to have a poll having it if they wish. The poll has to be generated. The government doesn't put the poll on. Well, it puts it on, but only after the petition. Yes, the 250 so signatures. So a few will have the right to a poll, and so they'll be open. As far as the western suburbs are concerned in the city of Perth, Not going to have that the Premier the proposes to legislate. We think he's going to legislate for the city of Perth and for the amalgamation of the western suburbs, but if he can't legislate for the amalgamation of the western suburbs, what's left of them, I might say, because bits are being chunked out for the city of Perth, what's left of them, yes. if he can't legislate because he can't get parliamentary support for that, I suspect he will put it back to the Local Government Advisory Board and ask them to make another recommendation in line with what they've already recommended. In which case then the poll rights will arise in those suburbs which are deemed to be abolished. The key word's abolished. Abolished, yes. Which would be all of them. Um, it is certain that, it is certain, for all practical purposes, yes. that Peppermint Grove Claremont and Nedlands will all call polls if they have the opportunity. It is almost certain that the Peppermint Grove poll would succeed because it's very small and they can easily get the 50% needed and their people down there are vehemently opposed to the amalgamation proposals. Yes. It would be tougher to win the 50% uh, oh, minimum too. turnout in Claremont and Nedlands but I think I could get it in Netherlands because I've been campaigning in Netherlands for a long time. I don't understand this. I, I don't understand his attitude to it. This is a background that's not good for the government. And there's nothing focuses the mind of a member of parliament more than the risk that he's going to lose his seat or she's going to lose her seat. Yes. And there will be other issues that do raise that risk and then this comes into play as another force against them. It's not good politically, and it's not good politically to kick your own supporters in the backside, as is being done in the western suburbs. That's rather obvious. That's common sense as well. Uh, Bill, can I ask something more personal about your political career? 
what is you really proud of about Liberal Party and what you've done? Well, I served in the government of Sir Charles Court as the Minister for Police, <coughs> the Minister for uh, Community Welfare, uh, and the Chief Secretary, which included prisons and, and, and uh, land agents and all yes. sorts of things, fire brigades. I was responsible for quite a bit of reforming legislation at that time. But I think if you ask me what defines my own, in my own mind, my yes. most important contribution, it was not in government, but in opposition. It was my unwavering opposition to the corruption of Western Australia, which occurred after we lost government in 1983 when all the institutions of state, with few exceptions, were in one way or another compromised or barefacedly corrupted by a government which just had no ethics. And I always fought against it to my great political cost. There is little doubt, little doubt, that I was removed as the leader of the opposition in 1986 because I was standing up to the businessmen who were very comfortable with that government. It was an horrendous period in the state's history. And I do say, seriously, that although it was to my great cost, politically and personally, to stand my up. fight against the corruption and the undermining of the decency of this state is what I stand for. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. And good luck for the future and the fight for this course. Thank you, Tito. And please tune in next week, same time, same channel. One-on-one -on -one shadow boxing. Have your say. <laughs>